Bueno, asumo que sí. Este, bueno, muy buenos días a todos. Este, muchas gracias por este, sumarse a, a participar en este taller sobre liderazgo y comunicación que eh, estamos organizando desde el espacio eh, de IT en el ACNI. Eh, lo primero bueno, que quisiera este, resaltar es que esta es una actividad abierta a todo eh, público. No es una actividad exclusiva para mujeres, así que este, bueno, nada, nos alegra eh, ver una audiencia diversa eh, interesada en la propuesta de hoy de eh, trabajar sobre nuestra comunicación como pilar de liderazgo. Eh, como les decía Macarena, mi nombre es Carolina Caeiro, soy coordinadora de desarrollo en BACNI, y eh, hoy los voy a estar este, bueno, acompañando como, como moderadora de esta sesión. Eh, bueno, eh, el objetivo del taller, un poco como, como lo indica el nombre, es trabajar sobre eh, dos aspectos cruciales de la comunicación que son eh, la oratoria y eh, lo que en inglés este, se llama o se conoce como eh, el storytelling este digamos ejercicio de, de narrar historias a través de nuestra comunicación ahora. y bueno este, la comunicación como todos sabemos es un aspecto clave para eh, desarrollar nuestro liderazgo eh, así que bueno el taller de hoy se va a enfocar en eh, brindarles algunas recomendaciones eh, muy puntuales Going to para give you este, invitarlos a, a, a repensar eh, uh, cómo nos comunicamos. Así que bueno, como comentaba Macarena, este, para esto nos acompaña so, eh, Manuel Libenson, que es especialista uh, justamente Manuel en eh, oratorio y storytelling. Eh, Manuel es profesor de la Universidad de San Andrés y de la Universidad de Buenos Aires en Argentina. Y este, bueno, antes de pasarle la palabra a Manuel, me gustaría invitarla rápidamente a Manuel, eh, Laura Kaplan, gerente de desarrollo de cooperación de la ACNI, para bueno, darles la bienvenida a esta sesión y profundizar un poco sobre uh, este, el nexo uh, entre este taller y el espacio uh, like de ACNI. Uh, Laura, te escuchamos. Tell you about this project. Laura. Hola, ¿cómo están? Hello, Muy buenos días. How are you? Good Gracias morning. por la introducción, Caro. Thank you for the introduction, Antes de arrancar, eh, quiero darles before, un poco de contexto y explicar, contarles the por qué esta let sesión ocurre en el marco de ITWOMEN. Hemos identificado un gran desafío en lo que hace la participación femenina en la especialmente en roles de para, para atender este tema, eh, hemos creado un proyecto marco que se llama un tecnología en el que trabajamos eh, particularmente en identificar qué barreras este, están dificultando la, la participación plena de mujeres que están preventing mucho potencial de, de liderazgo en nuestros espacios de, de trabajo e interacción con mujeres en nuestros espacios de participación de mujeres. Y en base a eso generamos so, iniciativas that, eh, y, y, y programas que buscan superar la comunicación o, o el arte de, de, de saber comunicarnos eh, colabora muchísimo con la construcción de liderazgo. Y es por eso que traemos esta propuesta eh, que si bien atiende o busca atender este objetivo de dar herramientas concretas para fomentar la participación femenina, un espacio que, como uh, the participation of women, it's a space that, as Carolina said earlier, is open actually for everybody, and, for, eh, and especially buena, for those eh, cons that consider that this practice is very good and can uh, contribute para, to para their personal development. Pleno, so without further ado, I give the floor to Manuel Liebenson, our guest today. Thank you, Laura, for such a clear welcome. So let me then welcome you to this session where we will reflect on the close link and such a fruitful link between the development of public speaking or storytelling, that is the art of creating and telling stories with our leadership, uh, uh, everyday activities and our daily activities. I love to be able to see people's faces, even if a little bit, to become familiar. I understand that uh, uh, today nobody cares if you turn the uh, camera off, but if you want to 
participate to so, so that we can see each other that would be wonderful because i think that that is extremely fruitful it's completely different from listening to the radio or other means uh, where we cannot interact so if you want uh, to enable uh, your cameras it's it's wonderful and it's interesting um and i invite you to do that today i'm going to speak of the impact of our words before doing that let me tell you a bit where i come from what i do what do i do for a living very briefly and then so as to then pose a number of challenges uh, related to the power of public speaking of rhetoric i'm passionate about the meaning language uh, since uh, uh, and I love uh, the fact that you invited me from the technology world to discuss the power of uh, words in the development of links among humans. And I, oh, I was always uh, attracted by this, just as some people feel attracted by devices or calculations. I loved words. I remember when I was a child, I went from one table to the other at restaurants, looking, uh, trying to engage uh, in conversations with people. And when I understood a word I didn't understand was to ask about its meaning. What does that mean? What does that mean? I was always looking for the meaning of words. That's why I was always interested in that i have a phd in linguistics and i have a master's degree in discourse analysis and i've been a prof university professor for seven 16 years at several universities that is i devote my life almost entirely to two areas one is to work with people so that they may truly develop resources and tools that may enable them to grow in their discourse and in their dis um, discourse uh, capabilities to build their own voice and uh, new words and to learn to say things. One is thing is to be able to speak because we are homo sapiens, because we have the neurologic capability of speaking speaking is not a, a gift uh, that uh, only some people have it's not that anybody has the natural um, gift uh, of uh, our rhetoric we all have uh, the potential for doing that of course we may have some disorder that may prevent us from doing it but another thing uh is the different in, in, for instance in english we have a two words talk and say so you may learn how to say things but not to give a talk you may learn how to speak and uh, give a lecture but today as uh, uh we are required as leaders to record a three minute uh, talk in a capsule and uh, so we have to relearn how to use words because the modality changes so we need to work in different ways and uh, i need to uh, i and that's what i work for to give you resources instruments uh, tools so that you may grow in this skill of being able to communicate to say things oh and also based on what you may listen and on the other hand uh, i'm a researcher on discourse and linguistics i go to meetings and i give presentations and i wanted to start this session by giving you a brief uh, task so that what uh, we discuss here may uh, make you wonder so take a piece of paper and a pen whatever you have and write down in a place where you may read later what you're going to write to yourselves. I'd like you to write in two or three lines very briefly. What challenges do I think I have to grow 
in my ability, in my skills, uh, my rhetoric uh, or my public speaking when I have to talk to different uh, audiences as a leader. What are the challenges that I think, even if just one? Yeah, if I have to face a certain challenge from today to a year in the future, because really I want to feel more confident. I'm terrified when I have to uh, give a public presentation. I feel like I'm very boring when I speak. I feel like people don't know. I don't know if people are listening to me or not. So I feel less confident. So I want to be feel, to feel more confident. I feel like I'm, I move around in a world where men lead and I feel inadequate. I don't know how to express my own voice. I mean, if you really can take on a challenge, that would imply that you need to grow in your rhetoric, in your public speaking skills, on how we use our words, our verbal resources to really make an impact and to really feel more confident in my day-to-day -day relationships. I'll give you two minutes, really, do so. I'll give you two minutes for you to write down that challenge. And I would love it if one of you can raise your hand, maybe there's an emoji to do so, uh, when you're done. And we will go back to what you've written at the end of my talk. But let me, I would want all of you to really write down a challenge, a challenge that implies something that you can improve. I'll ask you all to write this to yourselves. I don't want you to, to, to say what people expect you to say or something that will look good or challenge for humanity. No, something about you. How do I want to grow? What do I want to improve in my public speaking skills? And that is a challenge that I want you to go back on every so often. Please let me know once you are able to write that down, to write that challenge down. Gracias, Carolina. Thank you, Carolina. Great. Let me know. Clara, Solid and Trinidad. Okay, let me know. So we can all go back to read what we've written uh, a while from now. Thank you, Jennifer. Great. A few more. So we have more options. Great, great. All right, so you'll finish writing it down and let me begin by saying something that is essential. What do we think of when we speak about public speaking? It's not your skills or capacity to be efficient when we are conveying information. PowerPoint can do that and I, no one needs me to talk. Being able to convey information does not require the power of your voice or your body language necessarily. You can do it in, through very simple means. I mean, the really power of public speaking lies in the fact that we, and it's an art in making that content or that information is desirable. It is interesting for others to hear that really can connect with whatever concerns, desires, questions, search of the audience that that is the power of the word what we are going to say it is the impact of public speaking it's not just about being able to convey content but rather be very easygoing very expressive to really be able to engage the audience to develop expectation interest we want them to listen or to want to listen to what we're saying. So it is the opportunity to add value 
to others through our words, allowing them to develop sensitivities, reasoning, knowledge. So that is very important to consider. Public speaking has to do on how we express ourselves, the tools we use, how we can uh, create a different listening experience, a motivational talk. It's not the same lecture in a university, telling a story to teach something, being able to achieve through our words, through a journey, through different experience. All of this is how we build public speaking skills, how we make an impact on others, an emotional impact, cognitive impact, and that's the power of word. The power of word is so important in presentation. That's why we keep giving presentations. That's why we still need to open our mouths when we are launch launching a new product and it is not done by artificial intelligence alone. Why? Because our word allows others to think, to feel. So that's why it is so important to be able to articulate that information. At the same time, it has a, a big impact on leaders. Working on public speaking skills can develop confidence, self-esteem, being very versatile with our voice. It is not the same if I have to make a one minute clip or if I have a long podcast where I can really use different audio resources. So being flexible, being able to adapt all the time, the impact that our public speaking skills will have in developing leadership skills. We need to be more versatile, more flexible in terms of our communication skills to be able to adapt to different situations. So I want to invite you all in, in, in work of this nature, in addition to these 40 minutes in which we can, can share our challenges. Let me also mention different challenges, challenges that are associated to different problems. We can discuss challenges that we will face in the future that are associated to day-to-day -day problems that we have. And hopefully I'll be able to give you some tips or practical considerations on how to overcome these challenges. In the first place, I think a big challenge lies in the design. How do we design our presentations? How do we design our talks? Which, which decisions, methodologies are we going to use when we need to develop a presentation that we want it to have a certain impact. We have very poor methodology in this case. We usually pay more attention to the data and the information we're trying to convey than on the, on the, on the experience that we want to build for the audience. So what do we do in terms of design in general? Because we're not really focusing on an experience, but on content. So I have PowerPoint and I keep typing in information, information and information. So what do we get? We have a speaker who will read their PowerPoint one slide after the other one as a memory aid. And we're just simply repeating what the audience can read themselves. So the public speaker really is not in tune, is not in sync with the content because they just read it and it was just about expressing and, and transmitting content and that was it. But on the other side, well, audience was not interested, had no expectations, people feel overwhelmed because there's too much information and they cannot really focus or pay attention. So they cannot connect with further areas other than the information and the cold data that they are receiving as machine processing information. So we really have to challenge the design. We are not able to think as leaders anymore because really we just follow the uh, convey data model, transmit information, the paradigm today and what I think is richer and more valuable, thank God, it's about designing a communication experience for my audience. When you present, when you talk to an audience, when you do something, you're designing a communication experience through which, of course, you're going to convey content. But that content can be used in different ways and we can create different communication experiences for our audiences. So think about the teacher, female, male, 
math teacher that we all had at some point in our lives that caused you to really love math and think about that other teacher that really made you hate math. Why? It's not the content, the content was the same, but it was rather the experience, how they taught that content. What did that person or how that person really made it an enjoyable, interesting experience with that same content. So it really is important to change the mindset. Mindset. Our mindset is the mindset that I will be in when designing a presentation. I am I just thinking about the cold harsh data and information or how engage the audience with that data, with that information. How will I give them a takeaway? How will I make them think? How will I challenge my audience? Something that goes beyond the information, but rather how to engage the attention of my audience. Really, it's uh, we are alive, our body is alive in front of our audience. Some people feel reluctant or some people might want to listen for you for, for hours maybe with a certain speaker. So really when we are speaking in public in front of an audience, uh, public speaking skills are going to be essential and really expectations are at play, desire is at play as well. So how can I think of new ideas to design a, a, a rich experience rather than just a communication a tool for conveying information? So really I'm mentioning this because how many of us usually attend congresses and you are going to have thousands and thousands of words, one slide after the other, and really you just want to shoot yourself, right? Because how these people not think about the fact that I need to read this entire slide while paying attention to the speaker and how people cannot see that it's impossible to read this small font when you are sitting three meters away from the stage. So there are many variables when presenting. One, well, who's my audience? Who am I talking to? Of course, that is a given. It's a classic variable, my audience. But I also want to discuss design, designing a communication experience and really write it down. This is a key word. When we design, how do we affect the, de the device, the communication device, the interaction device? How will it uh, interplay in this communication experience that I'm trying to build when I'm using my words at the time of establishing a relationship with my audience. And this is essential. What is the device? And maybe you're thinking about thousands of ideas. And in addition, you have a technical background. So device in communication is an abstract notion. It's uh, architecture in my relationship. We are not speaking about a material link. For example, I am speaking and I see many screens or names on the other side. I cannot see your faces. I don't know if you're enjoying it or not. So there's no relationship in this case. So when we are uh, putting together a PowerPoint or a slide for uh, presentations where we're trying to achieve some impact, if we're only considering the information, only considering the content that I'm typing into this PowerPoint, of course, it is something that I can just email people. And actually many times we do email people this uh, material before or after the presentation. And in general, we send the same content, we email the same content either before or after than when uh, I'm on stage. A PowerPoint presentation is not going to be read the same or experienced the same if I'm listening to the speaker over the presentation or if I'm just downloading that email at home without the speaker. So many things change. When a speaker is talking about the presentation, if he's just uh, reading uh, what's on the screen, then it has a leverage effect, and and one may wonder why 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 am I listening to this? Uh, he's just reading, so that uh, is uh, absolutely critical. Or if the screen has a lot of text and uh, the speaker tries to rescue some things, but it makes them anxious, uh, so. 
some of them, if we are anxious, you can start reading. You you go faster and are trying to uh, read what he's going to say. So it's like dancing without uh, any rhythm. With uh, it's asynchronic because that difference in reading is uh, is uh, is dirty. Um, if we compare the uh, many things that are on the screen and what the person is saying, and I think that. Uh, in technology companies, there are many, many stimuli, and sometimes the speaker um, is trapped in uh, all that, uh, uh, all the data. But those are design problems that has to do with how the Discord will be uh, experienced in that device. For instance, a speaker speaking uh, with a, a PowerPoint there. But notice uh, how. Uh, PowerPoint uh, changes when uh, you are standing in front uh, of uh, uh, an, an audience with 200 people or 1,000 people, and how it changes here when you have to show it through Zoom because your body is no longer present as uh, uh, where you can move uh, and uh, you can uh, move your move your hands and uh, you can call the people. Uh, but here, all of a sudden. Uh, um, is uh, not so important and maybe only your voice is there. So how sometimes we feel the requirement of being more selective with the slides, giving less information, showing charts, triggers, or just a, a picture, a keyword, and the eloquence of your voice, the power of your voice that connects you, that uh, leads the way. What do I mean by all this? That uh, not only do I have to think of the contents of what I want to convey, but I have to think of how I want to do it. So and this is an experience. And here I'm going to give you a couple of things that uh, it's a fad, but uh, they are very useful. One is the concept of a journey. The journey that somehow you're going to plan with your talk, with your presentation. It's, it's that uh, the journey idea is very interesting, first of all, because it leads you to uh, ask yourself uh, where you want to take the audience, what are the ideas that you would like to uh, bring to them, the idea of taking, because you're going to work with people's attention, with expectations, with desire, with uh, uh, the idea of feeling like doing something. So that takes you to a mindset that has more to do with how am I going to take uh, the uh, audience uh, to each of uh, the, the things that I want to say and uh, trying to renew their interest in listening. So sometimes there are short journey so if you just have three minutes it's a three minute journey but then you may have one hour 40 minutes to discuss a certain topic and why is the journey idea interesting because of first of all because you have to think of your destination very sometimes the talks have a um uh, don't uh, the, you, you don't know why you the the speaker uh, said all that. So where are we going and why are we going there? Those, uh, the purpose and the destination are important. And then enable you to develop a, a, a map, a road, a roadmap to, um, uh, so that you can follow. That's the scheme of the different uh, posts uh, in a, uh, uh, the different places of when, when you go on vacation. For instance, if they ask you, well, did you go on vacations last year? Yeah, uh, what, what did you do? I went to Europe for three months. Could you summarize it in three minutes and five minutes? Well, it's impossible to do it, to summarize three months into uh, just five minutes because um, you, <clears throat> because uh, it, it's too long. And so designing talks with the idea of the journey. In the journey, there are many things that happen. For instance, the first is, uh, how can I call people's attention? And then uh, how can I develop that with a story? 
um, would I like to interact with the audience? Would I like to develop a quiz? And the third, would I like to build a case to provide statistics, that is to plan moments, not just information, to plan moments just as you would in a journey. We have a bit of B of the beach, then we want to go to the city to, to get closer to the, the local culture. So <clears throat> you have to think that uh, you're going to take the audience through a number of uh, uh, places that may be present or not, but places that uh, are, are all guide you to a final destination. So the interesting thing about a trip, uh, a, a journey, is that you can develop a plan and not fall in the trap of a very ri an absolutely rigid structure, because the best thing about journeys is experiencing them and the time of presenting the presentation, not just to plan it. That is why uh, developing ourselves as speakers does not just imply <clears throat> uh, developing rich um, journeys, but also be able to improvise, to become, uh, to get ownership and uh, to go back and forth without missing the train, but at the same time, uh, allowing us to have a certain flexibility. So I think it's very important, very interesting to see what uh, message I want to build, my point of departure and my point of destination. Another very fashionable idea, a challenge as simple as this. How can I give this information uh, the shape of a story, an account, as simple as that? How can I turn the information into a story because it's proven that stories that accounts uh, produce uh, identification, empathy, entity, um, memory, they uh, reach our souls. Um, so the challenge is, okay, I have all this information related to the results of the project. How can I shape it in a way that it will look more like uh an account a story so three four ideas about telling stories if you want to think of the contents as a story don't forget these three things introduction uh plot and uh, um and the outcome uh, so there's something that happens uh, uh, um at each time the story is, well, I'm going to tell you about a project that we are implementing. That is not a story. A story tries to arouse interest. And so intro introduction, plot, and uh, outcome. So that is if you want to shape it as a story. Now, if you consider that working with a story connects you with the internal phases, nuts. now working as a story sometimes it makes us approach a, a more sensitive thing so we, we need to have three clear concepts introduction plot and uh, outcome what happens in an introduction we could have three uh, in an introduction there are typically three things that happen in any story uh, anything that you can think of even the bible on the one hand a sort of uh, presenting the context, the setting, this, where the story is going to occur. So that uh, is, uh, applies to all sorts of stories because they take us to universes. That is why it's so important to build a common uh, context as Laura Kaplan did when she gave the context of this uh, <clears throat> activity. So it's, and there you explain uh, the interest uh, of interest or the empathy. <laughs> of course, there are contexts that may be more appealing than others. So we, you may love uh, thrillers and not love stories, uh, regardless of the plot. Uh, the plot maybe was uh, very well built, but uh, you can say, I don't, uh, this is not appealing for me or, or science fiction. Uh, it's not something that appeals me. I'm a, more appealed uh, by uh, love stories or whatever. So it's very important as a speaker, it's important for you to think of what the experience, what the 
shared experience would be or what articulates you with the audience so that you can uh, uh, put some value in that story that you're going to share. So another thing, when you're thinking of a storytelling, you have to arouse interest. Never um, think, never assume that the audience will be interested. Work to generate the, uh, an, uh, um, a question mark in storytelling or the challenge or the problem. And when I mean by problem, I don't necessarily mean a conflict, but a situation that required a resolution or, or that implies that there's a challenge, as in all the stories that we see. If you think of what happens in in, uh, in a picture, uh, in a film that some, <clears throat> you may be uh, 30 minutes into the film and they may ask you what's what is it all about? And you say, well, nothing is happening. Sometimes there's, uh, you don't have anything that uh, stands out in that. And then you have the kernel of the story. Those stories have hallmarks. The plot includes several significant hallmarks and there's a logic. Usually in the stories, you have the logic of the challenge. The, that implies uh, it, it implies overcoming obstacles and uh, learning transformation that is what gives you the core of the study the core that uh, where there's there's a, a series of events where the characters um, change as they experience um, the circumstances that you tell about until you reach the end where everything gets uh, revealed as if you started a presentation uh, as if you started giving very good outcomes but you 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 say it at the beginning and then you you may start by giving the results and then develop uh, the process and at the end uh, to re reach a conclusion. So those are the tips that may be useful for you so that you may uh, take home. So with the end, uh, you are, that's uh, good for recapping. That is, you try to summarize the core messages, the take home messages. Now, what would be the items or the bullets that, uh, uh, would summarize everything that you've been discussing. The second function of the ends of all stories, leave uh, teaching, lessons learned, morale, or takeaways. In the TED uh, uh, um, uh, talks, uh, they, uh, they call them the gifts. What do you want people to take away, to take home, to um, uh, what learnings? and. And the ends are also an opportunity to continue to work with the audience's expectations. You can leave them open or you can post new challenges. So the presentation is not really ending there, but it's opening the possibility for being resumed or continued with other stories. So, and now let me tell you two or three things that have to do not so much with the design, but rather with things that essentially have to do with the performance. In Spanish, in English, they call it the delivery, how you deliver the message that is so important to, to grow as a speaker. What do I mean? If you want it to be a good speaker, you also have to grow in uh, planning tools. How am I as a script writer? Can I produce a consistent story or am I more data centered and I don't think of uh, the story? So that poses a challenge to improve as a speaker, but then, uh, then I wanted to know that there are many issues that are quite uh, complex or difficult um, that you have to work out. And it has to do with to what extent you trust the words. One of the big problems to become good speakers 
is that we feel that a word is either not going to have value or that it will be judged or or believed or that I don't believe in it. So how can I uh, have any impact if uh, I don't want to, if I'm reluctant to do it, if I get very nervous, if my heart beats uh, so fast or my hands get sweaty. So if we don't feel comfortable, then we it's very difficult. So one that's one of the big challenges to develop ourselves as speakers. We have to work to uh, to generate a mindset of greater trust. We need to consider one. I think we have a challenge. Women in technology, I think, even have a, a great bigger challenge because, of course, it is a, an area where leaders are, are usually men, but that has happened in medicine and in other areas as well. So we need to achieve consistent delivery and to really find our place using our words, be able to work on our confidence and self-confidence to say something. And we need to challenge cultural models. Culture has done us wrong at some point. Using words has to do with asking for permission or even not even having the space to speak at dinner at the table. So we need to, to fight cultural models that we have inherited. So as leaders, we need to build new cultures that don't judge, but they contribute and they support. That helps people build more self-confidence and they feel better about making a contribution. Because really, if we feel like we're being judged and that we need to pass a test and we're also judging others, we're not really active listeners and thinking, what can I learn from them? But really, I'm judging. They are so boring. They are reading everything or oh, we are judging others or we're judging ourselves. So that really uh, makes us reluctant to participate. So we need to address the, 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 the mindset, the models that we have, and to rework them. The word is really a gift, a very valuable gift, and public speaking can allow us to really make a difference in the life of others, whether we know them or not. So we need to rethink ourselves, rethink our words to find sense again in speaking, in communicating, to also open myself up to making contributions and to listening to contribution, not just to confirm my own ideas, but rather to collaboration or cooperation. I should not fear someone questioning my own argument, but in a way I still think that I have to prove myself and to defend myself and my arguments. Why don't we open up? Why don't we open up to a more vulnerable mindset, a more collaborative mindset. There are many technology companies that really are heading that way. And I think it's about self-confidence. When we think Manu, about eso, cultural solo para avisarte models, que quedan unos, claro, este, podemos start? hacer unos tres a cuatro. Well, we y me gustaría alentar a, a la audiencia a que and vayan ya picando algunas preguntas. Eh, estamos reservando unos minutos para que, este, bueno, Manuel, les puedas con, contestar sus preguntas. We will have a, a va, few minutes gracias. for you to answer questions. So two more things that I want to add rituals we need to focus and prepare our concentration our body is a, a technique to build conference to really be present in the moment the body will participate in that impact i'm trying to make you really you can feel what others are feeling so it's my body in action so take your time listen to music or don't listen to music close your eyes breathe and try to to breathe in to my lower abdomen to really make it a ritual to concentrate to really gauge how i breathe you have no idea how much impact body language has in 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 uh, developing ideas or not being uh, blocked as actors or athletes do they prepare so really if i lack self-confidence if my if my body feels that really 
train your vocal skills and breathing. For example, I breathe and I utter the word M. That letter M. So I try to utter that letter. I am present. I'm aware of my voice. That is essential to really establish a better connection and to be in control. Let me just add two more things before wrapping up. I think we have big challenges from now on as leaders. We have always had big challenges, but now they are, we have even more. Challenges in terms of how we express ourselves, how we deploy resources, the pace, the rhythm, our body language, so the resources that are part in how we express ourselves. Children, for example, boys and girls, when they like a story, they will ask you to read that story, the tale every night. They know the plot, they know the information, but they want to hear you read it. Like uh, you are committed to it. You are embodying that story. You build an atmosphere. You are uh, convinced about that role play. So what is very important, and really I want you to, to think about these aspects, and I know we have very short time. How about we not just train our body language and our voice, thinking that there's only one way of using our body and our voice efficiently, but rather how can we use our body based on the de devices that I have to interact with. For example, today I am speaking to a camera and someone said, well, I cannot have or listen to the person's feedback, how I cannot see them, how do I know if I'm engaging the audience? So with a device like this, it is video, you don't know if you are engaging the audience or you like, for example, a, a radio ho host or a TV host, they don't know if they are engaging the audience. Maybe they can read tweets or maybe they can control the, 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 the volume of the audience or surveys or other means that will evaluate feedback. However, the radio or the TV host, they are not less interesting. Actually, we have all, it, it has all happened to us. For example, here in Argentina, Alejandro Dolina, and we can only hear his voice because he's a radio host. The voice itself engages us. And we didn't actually need anyone to interact with him. A radio host, for example, we sometimes feel them very close to us and they might have a great impact on us but we are not interacting with that host. So that's uh, where the challenge is. How do we express ourselves? What do we do with our resources based on this model where we're trying to generate an experience based on the device that we have at hand? Why? Because otherwise we'll feel nostalgia for the old ways. In the past, I could speak about the. Uh, I could speak in front of an audience, and I uh, was able to pay attention whether people were looking at me or they would play with their cell phone. Well, I cannot do that now on Zoom, but the TV host cannot do that with the audiences either. So really, we can ask, for example, the audience to imagine things or to question something or to imagine something that could uh, they could have in connection with a speaker. So really, when we question our audience, that really works uh, as well. For example, TV hosts cannot measure the reaction of the audience, but they say, well, if you're at home and you usually go on holidays and you are the ones, uh, you, some of those people who leave your vegetables in the fridge, well, I recommend you not to do that because they will rot in the fridge after 15 days. You should have fresh vegetables every day. And of course, one might say, I did not even think about it. I did not even think about the vegetables. But now that the TV host really mentions this, well, it kind of struck my attention. So that is a, a big challenge for us to, to think about it or to address. And this is just a technique. Uh, reading out loud, for example. Reading something out loud is uh, a good way to practice. 
For example, inspirational speeches, Mandela, Gandhi. You can rehearse with directions, with uh, stories, with uh, tales. And you can see you can express yourselves at a different pace, different shades, different manners. So that would that, that's a good practice. For example, if I'm on the plane and I am reading the directions, we will show you now how to use the emergency equipment. Every seat will have a seat belt that is uh, to be found on both sides of your seat. And then I play a different role. Now I'm complying with different regulation of the uh, air authority. We will show you how to use the emergency equipment or now and at different pace, complying with the regulations of the civil authority. You know what I mean? I use the different ways of expressing the same text. And it's something that we don't usually do. Ahí va. All right. Muchas Are gracias, there any Manu. Este, bueno, primero, you, este, te, te invito a que veas la sección de preguntas y respuestas First, y el chat. You, eh, los Q participantes en realidad no pueden prender su cámara ni levantar la mano. Eh, pero, este, nada, ya con los mensajes que estamos viendo en el chat, estuvieron escuchando muy atentamente. Tenemos, de hecho, 194 este, participantes en este momento. Este, de inicio a fin, así que seguramente, este, nada, creo, creo que todos coincidirían que, que los atrapaste este, con el them all. I'm, I'm sure um, everyone agrees. Dale, sí, yes, por supuesto, eso te iba a decir. Eh, si querés, ar arrancamos, te puedo Q &A. decir dos y las yes. contestás. Y este, lamentablemente entraron varias, no vamos a poder responderlas todas, pero acá les dos me parecen este, relevantes. La primera, sí, Maybe te las tengo que leer, si no te molesta, two, sí, las traductoras I, I este, las pueden traducir a algún español en español. Bueno, lo primero es, ¿cómo puede llegar a manejarse la comunicación al público? ¿Cómo puede llegar a manejarse en la comunicación al público las palabras que uno repite muy seguido? ¿Cómo se maneja las palabras que uno repite muy seguido? ¿Cómo se maneja las palabras que uno repite muy seguido? ¿Cómo se maneja las palabras que uno repite muy seguido? ¿Cómo se maneja las palabras que uno repite muy seguido? ¿Cómo se maneja las palabras que uno repite muy seguido? ¿Cómo se maneja las palabras que uno repite muy seguido? ¿Cómo se maneja las palabras que uno repite muy seguido? these words that we repeat too often and to really feel like we are overcoming hurdles. These words, or these that we repeat all the time, are not something bad. It's like our unconscious trying to sort some gap. Since I cannot find the word in my mind, I might sort it using a different, or I lost my train of thought, so I, I need to use this word. So some recommendations. With uh, your cell phone, record yourself at, dif at a different pace. First, when you are speaking really slowly, like you're trying to find the right word, you're not trying uh, to get people to like you. Like if I said, well, here I am today presenting a project that we have developed for the past five months. What I need to say, you know, since I'm speaking very slowly, I don't need to use any fillers. Then record yourself at a faster pace. And maybe if I need to do so, I'll do it twice or three times until we create the happy birthday effect. And that's what it's called at TED Talks. You can be having a panic attack, but you are able to sing the happy birthday song. We're not speaking about remembering what we're saying by heart, but rather being able to listen to yourself at a different pace. And also what is Ted recommended, the pace times two, being able to speak very quickly so that you are able to change your pace. These are flow activities. You are going to speak very slowly as if it were a thriller. Today, I am trying to tell you a fantastic idea. And then I'm trying to tell you a fantastic idea. And I'm trying to do it quicker and quicker and quicker. You know what I mean? So you're incrementing the speed. That is a, an excellent technique because you're going to sort these obstacles when you're able to find the right 
case for you, the right page that will allow you to find the correct word because fillers are used usually when I'm trying to go too quickly and then I'm not able to find the right word. An other aspect is trying to find different ways of saying the same thing so I don't repeat the same word all the time. Vale, sí, la and segunda I pregunta en realidad de Rolando Rojas, eh, y este, bueno, la voy a resumir un poquito. ¿Cuál Rolando es la mejor Rojas forma de transmitir, digamos, para personas en el ámbito técnico, eh, contenidos técnicos a gerentes o personas que no conocen, background, eh, but to those bueno, nada, elementos propios de la profesión? Who, who the ¿sí? that este, know the jargon, that eh, te invito, si the, podés, a hacer el ejercicio de responder más cortito, ya estamos pasados de tiempo. So este, para ir cerrando. Gracias. In your answer, because we are out of time, we need to think that, well, the way that I understand things will work for someone else. So there are two challenges. The first one, A, change your register. What do I mean? Don't use jargon. I always say you have to tell this story as if you were talking to a five year old. Try to find the easy words. That on itself is an exercise on itself. Second one, stories, analogies, doctors that are going to explain a condition using something very simple. That is the, the same thing. Use an analogy, use a story, use comparisons so people can make their own associations. Jargon and technical words are usually very closed and it will hinder our communication because people cannot really make their own association. So using stories, using analogies, your own experiences or situations people can relate to, easy language. As, as I said before, say it as you would to a five-year-old. What do you do at your, uh, at, jo at your work every day? If you have to tell these in a school to eight-year-olds, how would you tell them what you do? If you keep all of this in mind, I think that it would also be easier bueno, to Manuel, generate empathy gracias. and, and este, nada, improve communication with your todos, audience. Este, Thank you, Manuel, a you really engaged us a lot through your presentation. Macarena, I want to thank sí, all the attendees. And, well, just let me add, I, I, I want to send some uh, sí, por favor. materials for si attendees to have a Exacto. toolkit. Bueno, muchas gracias, este, Manu y Macarena, volvemos a vos.